Hey, welcome to United Voices for Philadelphia's event, uh, our mayoral candidates and can other candidates forum. Uh, we're going to have about 50 candidates here. It's going to be really great. A lot of questions and a lot of answers and a lot of learning. So thank you for coming. Make sure that voters are able to register and have their voices heard. Public safety. To be a judge for the people. Uh, so I grew up in immigrant communities. Some of the hardest issues. Who have a public interest background. Both community in oversight to the city budget. Public safety and education. Dignity and respect. Political will. Equal access to voting. More recruitment and more retention. Bienvenido, bienvenido a Community College. Nos siento asiento, por favor. Uh, please find a seat. We're going to commence. Uh, we have to start right now. Uh, my name is Gilberto Gonzalez. And on behalf of the faculty, the staff, administration, and students of Community College, welcome to Community College. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Junior Brainard and Reina Chambliss. Uh, from the Faculty Federation of Community College who's helped to sponsor this event. Um, I also want to thank all the volunteers, the United Voices members who made all this possible. Thank you. Um, one of the things I want to mention about Community College and why this event is important that is here at Community College because we have something called the Cato Scholarship. The Cato Scholarship, if you're graduating from a school in Philadelphia, and you do not have a social security number, you do not have a green card, guess what? You can qualify for that cattle scholarship. Uh,Cattle-Scholarship是一项奖学金。如果你从费城的高中毕业,即便你没有身份,没有绿卡,没有SSN号码,你也可以申请。te lo voy a decir en español. Aquí en el colegio tenemos una beca que se llama The Cattle Scholarship. Esa beca, si tú te graduas de una escuela aquí superior en Filadelfia y tú no tienes Social Security, no tienes tarjeta verde, tú puedes cualificar para esa beca. Que eso está abierto para todos los estudiantes que se están graduando de una escuela aquí en Filadelfia. Número dos. Si tú no quieres ir para colegio, pero quieres un programa de entrenamiento, tenemos lo que se llama CTE programs, tenemos becas para eso, y no tiene que tener Social Security, y no tiene que tener tarjeta verde. So I'll say this in English. Be besides the cattle scholarship, CCP also has a slew of, oh, presidents here, all right, awesome. So uh, we have a bunch of CTE programs. We have scholarships for those programs, and you do not need to have a social security number, and you do not need to have a green card to qualify for those scholarships. So community college is stepping up, community college is doing what it has to do, and we have to um, get other institutions to do the same. Okay, so that's a little bit about community college. Um, at this point, I want to I want to introduce our president of the AFT of the Faculty Federation, Reina. Uh, just come over and say a few words. Uh, he helped sponsor this event. Thank you, Gil. Um, good afternoon, everybody, my fellow Philadelphians. I am Raina Chambliss. I'm a 15-year employee here at Community College of Philadelphia. I am also the co-president of the Faculty and Staff Federation, 
And I am here on behalf of Community College of Philadelphia, Dr. Guy Generals, our college's president, my co-president, Julia Brainerd, and all of my colleagues and students here at the college. I want to welcome you to the United Voices of Philadelphia Mayoral Forum and Candidates Open House for City Council Judicial and Row Offices. Thank you to United Voices for, uh, for Philadelphia, who is hosting this event. And let's give them a round of applause, Andy Toy and his team, for organizing. Thank you to the sponsors, the broad coalition of organizations, community leaders, and members that join together to strengthen the voice of the underrepresented groups. I'm a proud, born, and raised Philadelphian. My mother, may she rest in peace, instilled in me the importance of education and exercising the right to vote. Yay. Both should go hand in hand during any election, and that is what makes this event so important. I want to recognize candidates and citizens who took the time to be here today. The future of Philadelphia is paramount. So again, welcome to Community College of Philadelphia, the city's college. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I have the honor of introducing the main man, of one of the founders, key founders of United Voices, Andy Toy. Please say welcome. Thank you, Thank you Gil. Sorry, you touch that, man. <laughs> um, thank you, Gil, and CCP and the faculty and staff federation of CCP for hosting this great event. Um, and we're excited to have about 50 candidates running for office here today, or maybe more, because I've seen some people. I've seen some people coming that we hadn't signed up. And we have seven mayoral candidates coming today, so it's pretty exciting. And we'll have a chance to hear from them some questions that are are targeted and focused on immigrant issues and uh, marginalized communities issues. And we want to make sure that we hear from them. And. If you haven't filled out the forms of the, the little questions, um, you can put your dots on there and we're going to take the top uh, couple of uh, questions and we're going to add them to the questions. So your vote counts already. Um, so uh, really quickly, who is United Voices for Philadelphia and why do we exist? Really began when a folks, folks got together outside of the Main Street Party to form what we called United for Obama or UFOs because we felt like we were almost aliens and had to create something that included us. After that, we formed the nonpartisan organization called United Voices for Philadelphia. We represent um, at least now 25% of the growing part of our city that is often ignored and forgotten in politics and the press. For example, sometimes we see stories and data that don't even mention the 8% Asian population of our city. We know that as various smaller populations, we have been maybe overlooked, but that is why United Voices exists, so we can come together 16% Latino population in Philadelphia, Asian Americans, Caribbean, African, Arab, Muslim, and immigrant populations together make up more than 25% of our city right now. We believe that in the power of our, diverse, of our diversity, that is one of the great things about Philadelphia, and we need to grow that and show that. Uh, but without a voice and engagement in our government and communities, we are not a whole city. So that is why this is important, and our issues especially around our immigrant communities, are critical to the growth and well-being of our city. And before I hand off the mic to my friend Michelle Kim, um, and we, I, the candidates are starting to come, so we'll try to be quick, the mayoral candidates. Um, I have to thank a bunch of people, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but I'm going to name some names, and if I missed your name, I'm, I apologize in advance. Um, Pat Christmas, Brad Valdia, Marwan Creedy, Pedro Rodriguez, Kathy Miller Wilson, Eric Eady, Pamela Morales, Linda Orfanelli, Peter Gonzalez, Ruben David, Glenn B. Norton, Peter Pedamonte, Ben Gable, Michelle Montalvo, Chris Chaplin, Pearl Wynn, Numa St. Louis, Roman Ventura, Sahai Chu Abi, Paul, Steve Paul, Kyle Turley, Magda Martinez, James Sang, Stephanie Sun, Roberto Luis Lugo. Uh, Miguel Concepcion, David Benyon, Steve Laren, Man Manuel Portillo, Will Gonzalez, Hilary Doe, Rob Busher, Michelle Kim, D Don Brennan, Dan Sal, Koji Kawakama, Kawakami, Adam Morena, Daisy Yang, John Chin, yeah. Tom Quinn, Steve Jones, Margaret O'Sullivan, Matthew Tharakan, Zabeth, Tilak Singh, 
Um, Hong for the photos, who's here, thank you. And um, ex-members of, uh, or actually, that are running right now, um, Nina, Ahmad, and Kay, you are, are running, so they're not part of this uh, uh, organizing this year, but um, we hope that they'll come back after they're elected. Um, and now I want to introduce, introduce Michelle Kim real quickly. Michelle has been a teacher and a civic engagement leader in our immigrant communities, now works at the school district, and has been pushing for more inclusive curriculum that includes all of our contributions and stories. Michelle and I have worked together at CMAC, where she led our get out the vote efforts and outreach to marginalized immigrant communities. So she's been in the trenches and understands what it takes to build community and voice for everyone. So no matter where they come from, their language, their ethnicity, or their differences. So Michelle, thank you. Woo! Michelle Kim. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for participating in our democracy here today. As Andy just mentioned, I've held a variety of roles and positions across the city of Philadelphia. I've been an educator in the school district of Philadelphia. I've been an organizer at CMAC, and I've supported teachers, leaders, and communities, as well as along the board of Hoodie Center and Philly Camp. Throughout all my work, my focus has been strengthening and uplifting marginalized and underrepresented groups, which is why this forum in particular is so important to me today. I want to thank also our 40 plus sponsor organizations that really volunteered their time, their money, and most importantly, reached out to their communities to let them know that this is happening. Even if people do not come, they know that there's a place and a safe space for their voices to be heard and an accessible space. We don't have time, unfortunately, to go through every single organization, since there is a long list, but please look at the board before you leave and notice all the diverse groups that have sponsored this event. I'm sure everyone here is connected to at least one of the organizations sponsoring this event. I'd like to remind you all that in addition to all of the candidates here today, who you can meet, find out more about, uh, build relationship and a con connection with, we have voter registration for those who still need to register or change registration, courtesy of the League of Women Voters, an e-poll book demo from the city commissioners, and if you know people who need interpretation in Spanish or Mandarin, please see the interpreters as well. Um, as you can tell, access and inclusion is a really important part of this candidate forum today. I now want to introduce Lorraine Ballard Morrill. Lorraine is currently the news director and community affairs director for iHeartMedia's six Philly stations, including Power 9, 99, WDAS, Roomba, and Q102. Lorraine hosts Insight on WDAS and Q102. Lorraine also coordinates community outreach for all of the stations, and under her leadership, Power 99 just received its record-breaking 7th Crystal Heritage Award from the National Association of Broadcasters, the most prestigious award given for community service. Lorraine has received numerous awards of her own, including the Philadelphia Human Relations Commission Human Rights Award, the Philadelphia NAACP President's Award, Cities and States 50 Over 50, and Black Women Roundtable to Stars Leadership Award. Lorraine serves on numerous boards too, including Global Citizen 365, PHL Diversity, Read by Fort, and Girl Scouts of Eastern PA. Now I want to welcome Lorraine onto the stage. Thank you so much. It's really awe-inspiring to see this room filled with all of you. That lets us know that we are an engaged electorate. We care about this election because we know that it's going to make a significant change in the leadership of the city of Philadelphia. And we're excited about that. And we also need information so that we can make a decision on who we choose when it comes to May 16th. Um, so welcome to all of you and all of the candidates and all the mayoral candidates that are joining us. I have been supporting the United Voices for years and at iHeart we do work to engage our audience in democracy and in their communities. So to give you an idea of how this process is going to work, each mayoral candidate will have eight to ten minutes of time by themselves, one minute to introduce themselves and why they are the best choice for us 
I will ask three questions that were the top ones decided by the organizers earlier. And then they will have one minute to answer each question. We can allow a little more time if necessary. Joy, up front, will be running our clock that will sound, well actually it won't sound a gong, I understand, but she'll be waving her hand to let us know that that minute is out. We will also have two to four additional questions determined by the vote of the attendees here today. They will be asked by leaders in the audience. At the end, you are free to roam around if you have time and meet uh, the folks out here, the candidates. You all can interact with the uh, candidates that are still present. And uh, we hope that you have a very informative and uh, important um, day today to get a better idea of who the candidates are. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with mayor candidate Warren Bloom. So Warren, can you come join us up at front? All right. Let me get my questions. All right, once again, you'll have one minute to answer each question. So the first question is... Can I, I, I can address the audience? Oh, that's audience. right. You get to introduce yourself. You have one minute. Let's give the person who woke us all up this morning a big hand first. How about that? Let's give the Lord a hand in, in other words. Come on, y'all. He woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. I'm giving honor to God first, first of all. Thank you so very much. I'm a former community student. Yay! So I hung out here for a number of years in time, but my name is Warren Bloom. My slogan is Bloom in the Spring, do the right thing. Um, first time I ran for office was 20 years ago. I ran for voting commissioner. How old were you and where were you? I'm being rhetorical, but listen, I'm very concerned about the state of this city. I, the reason I'm running is because I simply want to serve. I started out as a block captain 40 years ago. That was my first, first public service. So the block captain, if he's not getting on your nerves, he's not doing his job. I have 11 seconds to tell y'all to remember, if you're tired of the gloom, vote for Bloom. Thank you. All right, he's a poet and he knows it. Okay, so let's go with our first question. In your past public and private life, what have you done to support immigrant and make Philly an immigrant-friendly city? Well, I want to say, well, I want to thank the Asian community uh, for all these contributions they've done, the Korean community to the city. It's been my uh, lifestyle to bring all communities together and welcome members of, of all ethnicities and uh, uh, ethnicities and the cultures to Philadelphia. We are the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, and I wanted to continue to encourage that, that we have to come together more uh, as a community, and I will be aggressive in bringing communities together. And uh, I, again, like to let you know that one person cannot solve the problems of all this, uh, of the city. We're gonna have to do this collectively. So I'm asking you to help me save the city and I'm the only person who's talk about prayer. So we have to pray for our city. And can a person be well balanced without a prayer life and they like healthy and well balanced? I don't think so. All right, here we go. Number two, how would you ensure the safety and well-being of immigrants and other marginalized youth both in and out of school? Well, again, Daniel Outlaw is our police commissioner. The police are responsible for law and order and public safety. But again, I'm telling everybody that public safety is everyone's responsibility. We all have to step up and save and watch each other. I want to encourage, I want to encourage each and every citizen to realize and know that you have my support. We're not going to tolerate violence in this city. We're not going to tolerate uh, trashing our city, but we're going to work on bringing back Philadelphia to world-class standards. I want to bring up the education system. We want to make this a world-class city, so we're going to have to build and create jobs, and that should make everybody happy. If you got a job, you're, you're going to be happy. <laughs> okay, and the third question, how would your administration address health care, education, and other essential services for immigrant residents, regardless of status, whether documented or not? 
Again, health is a very important uh, factor in my administration because if you're not healthy, you can't live. I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure these resources are available to all immigrants, regardless of your, again, your race, nationality. Health is the number one thing in this city. I'm gonna be looking forward to the medical community and the experts. Again, the mayor doesn't know everything. He has to be engaged in helping the larger stakeholders and community members and leaders to help solve the problems of health in the city. But I will be very aggressive in making sure that you have a healthy life and a healthy uh, opportunity here in Philadelphia. All right, um, Andy, are you out there in the audience? If you are, okay. So we are going to take a couple of questions from our audience and that's you. Okay, so tell us who you are and what's your question. All right, my name is Pamela. Uh, my question is, how would you protect immigrant communities in Philly from the dangerous rhetoric from some politicians who create an environment of hate and fear? Yes, the only way you overcome evil is with good. I'm on the love frequency and they're not coming down. I'm going to have commercials and public service announcements and asking people like you, Pam, to make appeal to each citizen to realize that Philadelphia is a city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. And we're going to have everybody participate in bringing up Philadelphia, saying, hey, my name is Pam, I'm from this section of the city, Philadelphia, show the love. We're going to need love to conquer the hate, the bigotry, and the poverty in the city. Please help me do the right thing, both for Bloom in the Spring. All right, do we have another question? Okay. All right, tell us your name and your question. Hi, everyone. I'm Katia Perez. I'm with the Pennsylvania Immigration and Citizenship Coalition. Woo! 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 Uh, thank you. How would you ensure that immigrant and smaller BIPOC populations are equitably represented in city government and in decision making? Thank you very much. I'm going to appoint immigrants from the, 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 the diverse communities who are not represented. I can say that for the most part we do not have enough Asian, Korean uh, people in the cabinet, so I will be appointing and looking out to the communities that will have representatives who will represent them to serve in my administration. So the best way to do that is to hire and to appoint members of the Asian Korean community to the respective offices that's going to be best suit them. I'm in listening mode. It's not only everything what I can do, but I need you citizens to say, hey, Bloom, this is what we need to get accomplished. Not only are you guys, every night, I'll, I'll tell you at least 99% of you are not only capable of being mayor, but you're probably smarter than all of us put up here together, but you don't believe it. But if you believe in yourself and you believe in the change in the city we can do, we can solve the problems here in Philadelphia. All right. Um, sir, I just want to just make one small point in that United Voices is not just Asian. It's a coalition of all different populations in the city of Philadelphia, including immigrants of all different countries. Thank you again, and I'm sorry for that. I want to be inclusive to everyone. All Thank right. You. Okay, we have another question. Come on down. Thank you so much. My name is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. And my question is, how do you plan to engage the immigrant community and others to ensure all voices are heard and needs met? How would you work to build consensus on the ground? Well, that's, that's, that's what's unique about me. A mayor, the Nuts 100 mayor, is going to have to be somebody who can rally people together to inspire and encourage every individual to be the best we can be. Again, we have to come together under the spirit of love and cooperation for every ethnicity in the city. We're simply going to have to come and work together as a leader and someone who can inspire and motivate people. That's what I'm going to encourage is the businesses, the private sector to all work together to make this the cleanest and the greenest city and the best and the safest city in America. That's my goal as your 100th mayor. God already knows who's going to be the next mayor. And God has already chosen the next mayor. In the last 16 seconds, I'm going to remind everybody that had nothing to do with me. But I'm asking you to pray for this city, pray for your leaders, and only put your faith and hope in God and your soul. All right. I believe that is it, unless we have one more question.
All right. Um, we've got one more question before we one close. One more, is that all? We'll, we'll bring it on. So. Hey, um, so Philadelphia has only gained back population in the last couple of years, in large part due to... I'm sorry, can you say that again, David? Sorry. sorry. Yeah. Philadelphia has gained back population in the last few years, uh, but gained back. Okay. Increased okay. population in the last few okay. years due to immigrants, but um, has actually lost population just recently. How would you make sure the numbers continue to grow to stem the population loss we've seen? Again, you have to create an environment that's good for business and growth. Philadelphia, under my administration, will be build, build, build. I use Atlanta as a model that I would like to see Philadelphia follow. Philadelphia for years, and I don't know why, excuse me, we've lacked hotel space in this city. We want to build, and uh, that's, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, we lack the hotel space. And in order to become a world-class city, we have to build and create the hotel space that's going to create jobs and low-income housing, 3D housing, we can do within 24 hours. We have the technology. But I'm going to build the business community and the hotel, create the hotel space that makes Philadelphia to be a world-class city. I have 10 seconds. Remember, if you're tired of the gloom, vote for Bloom. I'm from the hood. I'll do you good. God bless you. All right. Well, Warren Bloom, thank you so much for joining us. Let's uh, show our appreciation for Warren Bloom for joining us in this candidates forum. Next, we're going to invite uh, former city councilman David O to join us here at the front of the room. So David O, in the house, where are you? Come on down. <laughs> One minute, okay, fine, all right. Just put a pin on it. Um, we understand that Jerome Parker is on her way, as well as some of the other candidates. So hopefully we'll have all seven here before the end of this afternoon. And here we are. David I. Welcome. Good. Have a seat. Good to see you. All right. Uh, just to go over the uh, rules, you'll have a minute to uh, introduce yourself, a minute to answer these questions. I'll give you three, and then we'll have some from our audience. All right. So, David O, one minute. Tell us about yourself. All right. I was born and raised in Philadelphia. I normally don't think that's a big deal, but I've learned over time that there's a value to having been here, seen what's happened, been there, done that before. Uh, I live in a neighborhood in southwest Philadelphia. It's called the King Sesse. Uh, it is an area that has a lot of crime. I went to public school there. And so I was around when we had gang wars, when we had uh, drug gangs, when we had the, uh, the um, crack cocaine issue. I was in the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office. And uh, I served on a lot of boards. For example, Community College of Philadelphia, Hahnemann University, Nazareth Academy for Girls, um, also, First Commercial Bank of Philadelphia, which was the first Asian American bank, um, and uh, uh, other places as well. Am I running out of time? Okay, so uh, I'm running for mayor. I served on council for three terms, and I'm running because there's things that I think I could do as mayor that I could not do on city council. All right. Okay, our first question is, in your past public and private life, what have you done to support immigrants and make Philly an immigrant-friendly city? So my uh, parents came from Korea, born in China because of the occupation. And so I'm very familiar. My father started the first Korean-American church. And because of that, he worked with a lot of immigrants who came here. They didn't know the language, didn't know the culture, and oftentimes, uh, you know, dealt with a lot of indignities, a lot of uh, ridicule, those type of things. I, I hope it is better today. But from that, uh, I wanted to become an attorney, and I did. And a lot of what I did was serve immigrant communities. I did a little bit of immigration law as well and immigration advocacy. When I did uh, get on council, I thought it was important that we have a more inclusive, global attitude in our city. 
and really tap into the power of our immigrant communities to connect us to the world and to bring in uh, economic opportunities. So I started a committee called Global Opportunities and a Creative Innovative Economy. All right, second question. How would you ensure the safety and well-being of immigrants and other marginalized youth both in and out of school? Well, uh, unfortunately, it's something that we have to really pay attention to. For example, I did a program for Brazilian kids that were getting bullied in school, not a little bit. Uh, I've done things with the Muslim community that have been targeted, as well as the uh, Mexican community, and of course, um, you know, the Asian American community. A lot of that had to do with engaging with the schools, connecting, uh, unfortunately, the police, to marginalized communities like the LGBT community when they were being targeted by violence by having the police commissioner and upper uh, you know, command staff deal with the community leaders to look at where they needed help, they wanted to have engagement, they wanted language, they wanted persons who would speak their language, know their culture, to stop in and visit. But I think it's important that as a city, Am I over? No? Still got eight seconds? As a city, we, we let people know where we stand. We make sure that our departments and agencies serve the communities, and, and we make sure that we are enforcing the laws in a way that is uh, commensurate with the sympathies and understandings of immigrant communities. Okay. All right. How would your administration address health care, education, and other essential services for immigrant residents, regardless of status, whether documented or not? Yeah, well, these things are required by law. So, for example, public education, that's required by law. And here in community college, before I was on the board, uh, I would bring students, oftentimes they were undocumented, uh, they had problems back in their home country. And community college, even in those days, though they were undocumented, did not have an F-1 visa, would take them in, help them get an education, and process them along the way. I think there's weak things we can do as a city, there's some things I'd like to do advocating with the state. For example, driver's license would be one of them. There's many states that now allow you to get a driver's license even though you don't have documentation. Um, so I think uh, when it comes to health care services, education, uh, and those type of things, and of course, we don't want our, our police, uh, while they're enforcing the law and, and dealing with things like domestic violence, to, uh, to make people feel as though we are the immigration agents, because we're not, there's an the immigration enforcement entity, but we're trying to get the cooperation of all people and protect them. All right, now I believe we're gonna take some questions from our audience. So who has a question? Come on down. I know, I know this gentleman, he's a very famous gentleman. He doesn't mean that I'm going to ask an easy question. <laughs> he's known for hard questions. And I'm, and I'm glad you're here. I'm uh, Eddie, I'm with the uh, Coalition of African Communities here in Philadelphia. So, great to see you here. Good to see you, Doctor. Here's the question. How can city government be more easily accessible and streamlined for small businesses and immigrant businesses who have had a hard time navigating the system? Yeah, I, I think the first thing is that this city does not obey the law. And I'll say the first thing. And as a council person, I have actually brought a federal lawsuit against the city and other things. If the city would follow the law, we would not have half the problems we have with our small businesses. First of all, um, a lot of businesses, small businesses in particular, are oftentimes targeted under really discriminatory ideas that they violate the law when they do not. And so certain targets like uh, Chinese takeout restaurants being targeted for closure by the police at 11 o'clock when nobody else is closed at 11 o'clock, that's illegal. That was going on for 14 years before we tried to make an amendment, failed, and ultimately brought a federal lawsuit against the city. For example, um, the city takes down plexiglass or bulletproof glass in only Asian stores. That's illegal. That's unconstitutional. Um, we have similar things when our city, with very good intentions about dealing with cigarette sales to minors, send them only into Mexican and Latino and Cambodian stores. That's also illegal. All right. We have another question. Another tough gentleman. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ruben David. And the question on to my call is, how would you ensure that immigrant and smaller, there's abbreviation BIPOC, BIPOC, stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color, 
populations are equitably represented in civic government and in decision-making process? Well, um, so they, they are supposed to be. The problem with our political system is that it really focuses on voters, and quite frankly, we're a city, city of 1.6 million people, but in this mayor's election, only 300,000 are gonna vote. And of that, right now, the candidates are trying to find 100,000. Who's not including in this effort are everyone who doesn't speak English, everyone who came from another country, everyone who's in a demographic that is believed not to vote. So as mayor, it's important that we get elected by the voters to serve all the people, 1.6 million people, and the best way to do that is to reshape our government so we're dealing with people as they are. There's a lot of people who have tremendous talents, innovation, creativity, but let's say English is not their first language, they're left out. They should not be left out. The city, you know, has to be much more inclusive and again, our economic future is in the global economy, in the innovative, creative arts economy. There's plenty of things such as healthcare. We could, we could really use um, the inclusion of all peoples. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, this is going to be a tough question. Yes. Uh, say what you say about the current mayor. Well, he was really good on this question. As mayor of the city of Philadelphia, how will you protect immigrant communities in the city from the dangerous rhetoric from some politicians, both locally and nationally, who create an environment of fear, hatred, and encourage violence? So unfortunately, that's something that has been going on for a long time. Uh, there are, you know, that's been part of American history. And uh, from the nativist movement, anti-Catholic, anti-Chinese, you name it, anti-Italian, anti-Polish, we go through a lot of that. It is important that we have a mayor that takes a very clear and forceful stand on the law, ensures that our city uh, does everything it can to make sure our departments and agencies protect the people. And then when we have those type of uh, rude statements and discriminatory statements, but also actions. Actions, you know, one of the things that I'll say that I've dealt with is, um, one, you have to clarify the value of each person. Then you have to confront and negate really incorrect history, uh, the marginalization, vilification of entire groups of people, which fortunately we have so much rich history of contributions. Uh, and then we have to make sure that our, our communities are very much engaged and at the table, able to speak for themselves. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us. David O, who is the GOP candidate for mayor of the city of Philadelphia. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We have Judge James DeLeon with us, joining us. So come on down. Hey. Hello. <laughs> have a seat. Just to reiterate our rules, one minute for an intro, one minute to answer each question. All right, so let's begin with your introduction. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Well, good afternoon. My name is Jimmy DeLeon. I am running for mayor of Philadelphia. I was a judge for 34 years in the municipal court here. But more importantly, I was born here in Philadelphia. I was raised in West Philadelphia, where I went to Our Lady of Victory Parochial School and West Catholic High School. I was raised by a mother who, uh, as a single parent who raised both myself and my brother, and I was a single parent as well. I raised a 13-month-old daughter from the death of my first wife, and at that time when I was studying for the bar exam, um, I was on welfare and I used to drive a cab just to keep some uh, uh, clothing on my daughter and a roof over our heads. So I guess that's about a minute, huh? No, you got 12 seconds, oh, 11 now. So other than that, uh, I've, I'm a homicide judge, so I've been dealing with the problem of homicide for the last 34 years. Okay. Oh. All right, so now, now your time is up. The first question is, and you have one minute, in your past public and private life, what have you done to support immigrants and make Philly an immigrant-friendly city? So... As an attorney, I was an immigration attorney, and I represented uh, basically both the Korean community as well as the Hispanic community. 
and I made sure that people from both countries and their families were able to come into the United States. Um, I also did EB-5, uh, as far as bringing people in through the EB-5 through uh, Georgia. So the specifics are that I am very well aware of immigration law and I have supported immigration law and have protected immigrants throughout my entire career, both as a, an attorney and as a judge. All right, the second question is, how would you ensure the safety and well-being of immigrants and other marginalized youth both in and out of school? So, the situation as far as safety is concerned deals with a program that I've developed called the Local Incident Management System, wherein any problem that deals with immigrants is declared by me to be a dramatic incident. And that would set the problem, in, that would set the program in motion, which is a, a system of processes and procedures that would enable the local government, which is me, to combat problems against immigrants by enabling the necessary responders to work more effectively and efficiently to manage the root causes of any of the type of problems that immigrants go through. All right. How would your administration address health care, education, and other essential services for immigrant residents, regardless of status, whether documented or not? Well, the situation is that I would have workers go out specifically uh, to target the immigration community. Now, it's not a targeting per se like that, but it's a targeting to make sure that the immigrants have the necessary programs that they need in order to be healthy that they have um, health, health programs, both uh, mental health, physical health, that they're able to have post-traumatic stress disorder counseling, that they're able to have job counseling, that they're able to have entrepreneurial counseling, that they become part of the workforce coordination efforts that we're doing. Because see, Philadelphia is a city of immigrants, and we have to maintain ourselves as a city of immigrants. So that means that the city has to open up its entire departments that it has to immigration services. So basically, I would have an individual in my cabinet that would be a director of immigration services. All right. And now I believe we have some questions from our audience. All right, tell us who you are and tell us your question. Hi, uh, my name is Ben. So my question is, uh, how can city government be more easily accessible and streamlined for small businesses and immigrant businesses who have a hard time navigating the system? So, as far as making a, a, a city streamlined for small businesses, the first thing is we do that we have to have business incubators. The other aspect is that we have to streamline the paperwork. Now, because we streamline the paperwork doesn't mean that the people are able to find out where the streamlining is taking place. So this is where the chambers of commerce come in. We have our African American Chamber of Commerce, our Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and our Asian Chamber of Commerce, as well as our normal Chamber of Commerce. So in these chambers of commerce, I'm going to fund them, where they have individuals in each of those chambers that a small business will be able to come into as far as any paperwork that they need, and the representative of that chamber will be able to walk them through all the paperwork that they need in order to get their business up and running. All right, great. Do we have another question? Another question? Oh, come on down. Tell us who you are and share your question. Good afternoon. My Good name afternoon. is uh, Pearl Min Zhu Hun. I'm the president of the Northern Philadelphia Chinese Association. My question for you is, what will you do in your policy to mitigate racial hate issue and bring people together to build a safer and better community? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. So the specifics are that we do have hate crimes here in Philadelphia, but now the other aspect is that myself, as a judge in my courtroom, you had to be treated with courtesy and respect. 
That is what's expected from me as a judge and what you would expect when you walk into my courtroom. And as mayor, this is what you would expect from me when you walk into the city of Philadelphia. That everyone within the departments of the city of Philadelphia, number one, is treating people with courtesy and respect. Number two, that we have diversity and inclusion throughout our workforce. Number three, is that we enforce the laws of, against hate crime and anti-Semitism and also um, any, um, hate against, uh, against Asians, against blacks, against whites, because we ourselves as a city, we're called the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, and myself as mayor, I'm gonna make sure that's what we are. All right, um, one more question. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Peter, and uh, we are members and staff of the New Sanctuary Movement of Philadelphia. That's great. <laughs> so we have a question about engaging the different immigrant communities in Philly. How do you plan to engage the immigrant community and others to ensure all voices are heard and needs are met? And how would you work to build consensus and find common ground? What was the consensus in which? Common ground. Okay, so the situation is, as far as we're concerned in Philadelphia, first of all, we have to remember the three C's. Conversation, cooperation, coordination. So, in this particular area, as far as immigrants are concerned, I have to have all immigrants involved throughout the governments in Philadelphia. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach out to you. You and your organization are going to have to sit down with me and tell me exactly what it is that we need to do in order to have all immigrants within Philadelphia part of the homogenous, the homogenous community that we are. And the importance of that is what I was saying earlier that we are the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, and I need organizations like this to task me with the individual I have to make so it happens. All right, let's thank Judge Jimmy DeLeon, candidate you, for Mayor of the City of Philadelphia, for joining us in this panel this morning. Thank you so much. I'm going to set a couple of my cards around, if it's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Is he a Democrat or a Republican? He is a Democrat. He only had one Republican. Oh, okay. And that was David. All right, and now let's welcome former city council member Sherelle Parker. First of all, that green is amazing. You look stunning. All right, so uh, just to let you know, we have one minute to introduce and then one minute to answer each of the three questions, and then we have questions from our audience. All right, so we begin with asking you to introduce yourself. You've got a minute. Okay, so let me just start by telling you that my name is Sherelle Parker. I am a product of very humble beginnings, and my lived life experience is closest to the people feeling the most pain in our city right now. When you hear me talk about making Philadelphia the safest, cleanest, and greenest big city in the nation, I don't want you to think about that as a campaign slogan. I want you to take some time to check out what I've done. To support neighborhood-based small businesses, I established Power Up Your Business program in partnership with the community College of Philadelphia that's now the chief feeder for Goldman Sachs' 10,000 small businesses. To clean up neighborhood-based commercial corners, I established Philadelphia taking care of business. In addition to that, I introduced a comprehensive neighborhood safety and community policing plan. Thank you for having me. All right. Our first question. In your past public and private life, what have you done to support immigrants and make Philly an immigrant-friendly city? So one, in a very specific way, um, I have been unapologetic about advocating for Philadelphia's sanctuary city status, even when it wasn't a very popular thing to do. In addition to that, you all will remember that near Broad and Olney in the 9th Councilmatic District, uh, there were some organizations that had a less than stellar background 
attempting to open and operate what they consider to be some transitional housing for immigrant children and some adults. And because they didn't have a track record that was of the foundation built um, in acting in a, a humane way, we didn't support that activity. Language access is extremely important to me, and I am an official English as a second language instructor. I'm an English teacher by profession. All right. Our second question, how would you ensure the safety and well-being of immigrants and other marginalized youth, both in and out of school? So one, I want to do something different here in the city of Philadelphia. I want access to year-round educational opportunity. We don't need two months off in the summertime. I want our young people in school as early as 7.30 in the morning, closing no later than 6 p.m. Yes, we'll have the traditional academic standard day, but English is a second language. Um, all of the industries that are growing and thriving in the city of Philadelphia, I want our young people to have access to those opportunities and we will do that by bringing the, the private sector into schools. Think life sciences and biotech. Um, think the building trades in our school. Think language access and training, being very intentional about it early in the morning and in the evening. If you sh it's not special. This is a part of our culture, and if we really believe in a diverse Philadelphia, all of those services will be available. All right. How would your administration address health care, education, and other essential services for immigrant residents, regardless of status, whether you're documented or not? Uh, one of the worst things in the world as an elected official that you, the electorate, could say to me is that the only time you see me is when I'm asking for your vote. That won't be that way under Parker administration. We will have what we call mayor's community councils in every council district, and they will be comprised of the people who live in those districts, and we will advocate together, and we will service together, providing direct connections between departmental agencies and residents in our city, and we will be intentional about it. And we will also, again, the language access, I just talked with Council Member Maria Kino that Sanchez about this. We have to be intentional about no matter what language it is that you speak in the city of Philadelphia, if you need access to language assistance, we need to make sure it's available across the board, and we will. All right, we have some questions from our audience. So, I'm sorry, Lorraine, I didn't say thank you, Lorraine, for having me. I just sat down and I'm just running in. I'm sorry, thank you so much. Well, you're welcome, and uh, we know that as a candidate, you have to run from event to event, so we totally understand. All right, so let's have that question. Who are you, and who's the question? Hi, my name is Miranda Alexander. I'm the founder and president of Caribbean Community in Philadelphia. So how do you plan to engage the immigrant community and offer, I'm sorry, sorry, and others to ensure all of our voices are heard and our needs are met? How would you work to build consensus and find common ground? The reason why I love this question is I just left a meeting with Latino leaders in the city of Philadelphia from multiple organizations. And Lorraine, guess what we should never do? Make any community a monolith. Because you are a part of the Asian community, you can't just focus on the Chinese community, the Korean community, the Cambodian. You have to think about every constituency group that falls under what we reference as uh, the, the Asian umbrella. The same thing goes for the Caribbean uh, community. It can't all just be, you know, sort of Jamaica or Grenada. Or you, we have to make sure that all communities have access to support. It's almost like the spiritual and religious community. Community. I want to be supportive of the Muslim community, but not all Moonies are, are Muslims are Sunni. Not all Muslims are nation. Not, so there is very much variation in communities, and when we're serving the city, we have to make sure we take those variations into consideration. All right, our next question. Hi. 
Hi, Michelle. I work at the school district of Philadelphia. How would you protect immigrant communities in Philly from the dangerous rhetoric from some politicians who create an environment of hate and fear? Hate will have no place in a Parker administration. Zero tolerance. How do we know, Sherelle? I am black. I am a woman. I have had to live my entire life at the intersection of both race and gender. I know what it's like when people think that you are invisible, when they think you should be silent, when they think that you shouldn't have a voice. And because that's my lived life experience, see that's the difference in what you get in a Parker candidacy. I am extremely passionate about ensuring that there is tolerance and inclusion and quite frankly, zero tolerance for hate of any kind and anywhere it shows its ugly head. Racism, sexism, classism, all of it, there will be zero tolerance for it and we'll work together to fight it systemically to ensure that it's not president government. All right, we have another question from our audience. Thank you. How can city government be more easily accessible and streamlined for small businesses and immigrant businesses who have a hard time navigating the system? One, we can make sure language access is good. I went on a website, now full disclosure, don't tell, because I know it came from this room. I'm a, I'm a technical dinosaur, but this is what I know. There are some websites when you're trying to buy something from them in retail, where they will ask you to click a link and whatever language it is that you want, all of the information comes up. Why is that, that not readily available for every department in the city of Philadelphia? It should be standard operating procedure across the board. And here at CCP, with Drexel, with Penn, with all of these institutions of higher learning, not only should we expect it from our staff, but any assistance that we need, we should be able to get it. And it should be readily available for any service that you need to access. And we have to be more web. Base. Imagine, I can order an Uber right now and know where the Uber is, but if you try to get a city, a pothole filled, get a permit or a license from the city, you should be able to know where it is too, and we should use a lot more app-based uh, service. Okay. All right. And we have one more question. <laughs> I'm running out of people. Um, no, actually, we have one. A lot of people. Um, uh, so Philadelphia has only gained back population in the last decade, but recently, actually in the last few years, we've lost population. And a lot of the population growth was because of the immigrant population originally. What are we going to do to continue to stop that from happening and losing population? Is there a way we can bring back more people or attract more people? The first thing we need to do is what my grandmother said. We need to grow Philadelphia's economy. We need to grow Philadelphia's population. But you can't do it if we don't make our city safer. That is not a lie. We need to have zero tolerance for any misuse and or abuse of authority by law enforcement. But we have to be unapologetic about shutting down open air drug markets in the sense of lawlessness that's been allowed to prevail in our city. We can't allow commerce to thrive when there are people committing crimes and retail theft from stores knowing and intentionally only stealing $499 worth of merchandise because they think with that that they won't get prosecuted. I am a mayor who will not be afraid of making the tough decisions necessary to bring order back to our city and that it's the safest and cleanest big city in the nation. That we make people want to come here, arts, culture, but if it's not safe and you think you're going to get carjacked at the gas station or you can't go catch the bus, you don't want to be here. All right. Well, let's thank Sherelle Parker for joining us here. And it's Thank you so much for joining us today. I just have to say, you can't say much in these kind of forums, Lorraine. I hope you will watch some of the other debates and information sessions because trying to answer complex 
issues in 30 seconds and 60 seconds. It doesn't give you a chance to really know me. So hopefully you'll go on and do some of your own homework and not just listen to what people say, but check out what they've done. It's a strong indicator of what they'll do in the future. Thank you. I think that's great advice. Sherelle Parker, former city council member, candidate for mayor of the city of Virginia. And now, we have Rebecca Reinhardt. Rebecca Reinhardt, please join us at the podium. So just to repeat uh, the rules of the game, you'll have one minute to introduce yourself and one minute to answer questions. We'll have some questions from the audience as well. Rebecca Reinhardt, go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, it's wonderful to be here today. My name is Rebecca Reinhardt, and I'm running for mayor because I believe that I am the right person to lead our city forward in this truly critical time. Uh, I know the city's budget inside and out from being the city's budget director. I've managed a thousand city employees and gotten things done as the chief administrative officer. And I audited the departments as city controller and put forth thoughtful solutions to fix the city's issues. Uh, but my power ended there. As mayor, I can and will make change happen. We need a mayor with the experience and the courage to fix our city, to make it safer, cleaner, and to fix our schools. And that's the mayor I'll be. Thank you. All right, our first question. In your past public and private life, what have you done to support immigrants and make Philly an immigrant-friendly city? So I have, uh, in, in my public office, always stood for people uh, and people's rights and had an inclusive workforce environment at the controller's office where we had a very diverse workforce. Uh, and I've used my voice to uplift communities and to make sure that we stay the diverse uh, community that we need to be. Uh, and that's the way I've led as city controller and the way that I'll lead as mayor. Because it is important that we protect immigrants' rights, uh, that we stay a sanctuary city, that we make sure that we have language translation, and that we fully support our immigrant groups across our city. And it's something I believe in strongly, that we are a city of diversity, we are a city of neighborhoods, and that's the way that I'll lead. Thank you. All right. How would you ensure the safety and well-being of immigrants and other marginalized youth, both in and out of school? Yeah. Well, safety is the number one issue right now. And as mayor, uh, it will be my top priority to tackle gun violence and make our city safer for everyone, which will also make our city safer for youth and immigrant communities. Uh, as mayor, on day one, I'll activate the city's emergency operations center to coordinate the police department response, but also streets to fix street lighting, parks to have uh, expanded rec center hours, live to have expanded library hours in our neighborhoods. Um, we need to fix our city, and what that's going to take is a strong leader. The other thing I'll do as mayor is I'll pull the district attorney and the police commissioner into the same room so that we are tackling illegal guns. There are way too many guns on our streets, and I will make sure that that works better and we get them off the streets. How would your administration address health care, education, and other essential services for immigrant residents, regardless of status, whether documented or not? So, our city government needs to work for everyone who lives here, whether they're documented or not. Uh, so I will make sure that city health centers provide services regardless of documentation, that education and other services are here to provide uh, services for all of our youth because we are one city. And our immigrant communities add to the vibrancy of our city. They, they help make Philly what it is. Uh, so I will stand with 
the immigrant communities across our city and make sure that immigrant communities feel protected. Uh, we have so much diversity, uh, we need to make sure that it feels protected and that law enforcement uh, does not get involved where they don't need to in immigrant communities. That's the way that I'll lead. All right, now we have a few questions from our audience. Come on down. Hello. Hello, my name is Pamela. Uh, the question is, how do you plan to engage the immigrant community and others to ensure all voices are heard and needs met? How would you work to build the consensus and find the common ground? It's a great question. So, uh, as mayor, I will make sure that we have members of the immigrant communities in our departments across our city. So that when the health department is making decisions around policy, that the, the needs of the immigrant communities are considered. That when we're making decisions around uh, the streets department and signage, that the needs of the immigrant community are considered. To me, this isn't just about creating uh, an office or having a person or two in the mayor's office. It is about a paradigm shift of how we look at city services to make sure that the needs of the immigrant communities and the voices of the community are heard as we provide services across our city. The city government needs to work for people. That's why I decided to run for mayor, and I'm going to make it happen. Good afternoon. Hello, I'm Newman, and I have the following question. How would you ensure that immigrant and smaller BIPAC populations are equitably represented in city government and decision making? Do you have immigrants as part of your administration, as part of your decision making team? I absolutely will have immigrants as part of my administration, as part of my decision-making team, as part of my senior cabinet. Because we need to have the voices of those that are not often represented. Uh, and the immigrant communities are diverse in our city. And we need representation from that diversity. Uh, so that we have uh, people that are part of the cabinet that are Latino, that are from Asian origin, that are from African origin, that we can truly make decisions that are good for our people here in our city, for all Philadelphia, because Philadelphia is a city uh, of immigrants and we need to lead and govern for everyone, including our immigrant groups. All right, do we have uh, one more question, or, and here we come, okay. Hey, I'm Ben, uh, earlier I didn't say that I work for the Welcoming Center, uh, so I have the following question. How would you protect immigrant communities in Philly from the dangerous rhetoric from some politicians who create an environment of hate and fear? Mm -hmm. I will not let hate have a space uh, under my administration as mayor. The way that I look at this is that when I hear something hate-filled, I use my voice to say, no, that's not okay. That is not okay. That is not the city we are. That, does, that language does not have any place in our city. Um, that's the way I led a city controller. I stood up. Uh, for what is right for people that didn't have a voice on on a wide range of issues. And that's the way that I'll lead as mayor, to say, look, we are a city that's only as good as how we treat all of our groups. And uh, I'll say there's no place for hate. Absolutely there's no place for hate. And in fact, we need to set the record straight about how much our immigrant communities contribute to the city of Philadelphia. And that will be part of what I talk about on a daily basis. All right, we'd like to thank you very much. Let's please uh, give appreciation for Rebecca Reinhardt, running for mayor of the city of Philadelphia. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Truly an honor. Uh, May 16th is the election, so thank you so much.
seat. All right, we're going to take a quick break. So talk amongst yourselves, and uh, we shall be returning with our next candidate. A 10 minute break, so whether you go out, come back in 10 minutes, we'll continue. Our next candidate is former city council member Helen Gim. To uh, reiterate the rules of the game is uh, one minute to introduce yourself, and then we will ask three questions, and you'll have a minute to answer those, and then we have some questions from our audience. So, if we could get your attention, please. Shh. Oh, thank you. That elementary school minor that I had. All right. So let's begin. Uh, one minute, please introduce yourself. Good evening, every good afternoon, everybody. I am Helen Gim. I am so proud to come before this community that helped brought me to who uh, to where I am today. Um, I am running uh, for mayor of Philadelphia to bring a transformative change to this city. There's lots of people who are running for office, and I'm running to change the way people actually live. I spent 20 years in many immigrant communities transforming the ways in which we have been able to hold on to our neighborhoods, to make sure our young people were cared for in schools, to make sure that safety was an important part of our reality, and to make sure that we delivered real economic opportunity. And I'm running for mayor not to start a job in January 2024, but to finish a job and to deliver the services that I know the city can have, to build modern schools, to deliver real economic opportunity, and to make sure that safety comes through and invest in Philadelphia. I look forward to having that conversation with everybody. All right. In your past public and private life, what have you done to support immigrants and make Philadelphia an immigrant-friendly city? So to me, I don't see Philadelphia as being immigrant-friendly. I see Philadelphia as growing and transforming through the power of our immigrant communities. Um, 25 years ago, I've been involved with our immigrant communities, making sure that we, fought, we stopped Chinatowns from being displaced. We made sure that we put um, family centers and community programs in South Philadelphia to support vibrant Southeast Asian communities. I stood alongside of Latino, Haitian, um, African communities when we faced deportation and detention. And I've made sure that this city invests in small businesses and in real economic opportunity um, and not so much in all the corporate towers that are being built downtown. Um, most importantly, I've invested in families. I've supported and made sure that young people were kept safe in their schools when they were being um, bullied and harassed to make sure that we brought uh, vibrant uh, language arts um, and bilingual counselors to schools. And I'm here to make sure the city delivers on a promise to its immigrant communities that this is a place to call home. All right. How would you ensure the safety and well-being of immigrant and other marginalized youth both in and out of school? Um, I mean, I don't know how I've not done anything like that. This school system has been left behind by mayor after mayor. Every single mayor before me has turned his back on our public schools or has failed to fulfill their promise. And I'll be the first mayor to take over a school system in more than a quarter century with the passion, the experience, and the plan to actually turn around our school systems and support our young people. I'm going to prior prioritize their safety first and foremost. I'm going to make sure that we deliver on uh, supportive services and mental health treatments and language access in our schools. I'm going to make sure that our communities, especially our language minority communities, are fully brought into the fold, including parents. And I'm here to modernize and build public schools so we don't see them collapsing time and time again. Um, my vision is that the city grows when our, when our school system is strong, and you'll get that from me, not just as a promise, but with a history of work. All right. How would your administration address health care, education, and other essential services for immigrant residents, regardless of status, whether documented or not? 
Um, I've always believed that our city services have to be, especially on the essential issues of housing, healthcare, education, economic opportunity, I've made sure that we cleared out um, any, uh, any barriers for uh, status issues. Um, when we were talking about COVID vaccines, when we were talking about um, landlord and tenant rental assistance, when we talked about policing and public safety, and when we talked about services in our schools. Um, I am somebody who has always gone in assuming that the city has been dysfunctional for a long time. Um, I don't think that the city is doing things perfectly. I'm somebody who comes in and makes sure that the city works for its communities and residents. I make sure that immigrant communities are at the table, um, not only planning out programs, but helping evaluate and invest in further uh, things so that we can actually get the city moving for the communities that actually uh, make the city work. How would your administration address health care, education, and other essential services for immigrant residents, regardless of status, status, whether documented or not? So I'll go back. Um, you know, one, I absolutely said, um, I'm here to clear out any barriers. We made sure that there were no barriers for status. Um, I'm absolutely committed to seeing community members served um, through neighborhood-based health centers, um, making sure that business service hubs are in communities, um, to make sure that our rental assistance programs and our housing work does not restrict by status. That also includes and makes sure that we are a vibrant language uh, accessible city, that we have multiple languages that are working in every single department. And I'm also somebody who has expanded laws. Like, I don't think that the laws that we've got are working right now. So I've expanded a lot of laws that deal with labor rights, that deal with housing, to make sure that immigrant communities are not only excluded, not excluded, I want to make sure that they're absolutely inclusive and part of the, part of the work that we continue to do. And I'll hold myself accountable to that. All right, now we're going to take some questions from our audience. Hello, my name is Sahai Tuabi. I'm the Pennsylvania State Director with African Communities Together. Uh, my question to you, Philadelphia has only gained back population the last numbers of years, in large part due to immigrants. How would you make sure the numbers continue to grow to stem the population loss we've seen in the last two years? Yeah. So thank you for that question. Absolutely, Philadelphia has reversed five decades of population decline because we've helped grow neighborhoods and communities, because we've made vibrant statements um, about how to protect ethnic enclaves, whether in Chinatown or Africatown or in South uh, 7th Street. Um, these are messages that we send out to the rest of the country that this is a place that's going to invest in immigrant communities and, uh, and make sure that this is a city that is safe. I've been very clear about the importance of establishing Philadelphia as a sanctuary, welcoming city, but to me it's not just a label. It means that actually our communities are treated safely, that 911 response times are responded to, that vibrant commercial corridors are supported with city commerce department grants and supports, and that our young people go to schools that are safe and vibrant. That's how we continue to grow Philadelphia, that's how we invest in our immigrant communities as well. All right, who has our next question? Hi, I'm Michelle. I work for the School District of Philadelphia. How do you plan to engage the immigrant community and others to ensure all voices are heard and needs met? How would you work to build consensus and find common ground? Um, I think the most important thing that we need around our schools is a big vision for them. I cannot tell you that I don't think any mayor or um, in recent history has talked about what a big vision for our city looks like by growing our public school system. And one of the most important people who've helped lead this work are the families and community members who are in front of me. People who built out a big vision for sanctuary schools like Juntos has done. Um, communities like Asian Americans United that fought for safe school environments and, and schools that are free of bullying and harassment. And a lot of uh, organizations here who have helped bring in new um, educators and staff members to fill our public schools. So absolutely, I'm here to grow our school system. I hope I'm judged in my first year by my ability to actually grow a public school system and be 
because I think it's the best way to grow Philadelphia. But that's not going to happen by accident. It's not going to happen unless a mayor actually has the passion, the experience, and the plan to deliver it. And I think I'm the only one that has spent my life working on this, uh, on this effort as well. All right, our next question. Hi, I'm Don, I work for CMAC. Um, how would you protect immigrant communities in Philly from the dangerous language from some politicians who create an environment of hate and fear? I don't, I think I have been somebody who has spent my life uh, figuring out how immigrant communities have voice when so much of our world has kept uh, people silenced and down. Um, I felt so strongly that uh, we found our power when we were most being silenced. We learned how to speak languages that, um, that city governments did not necessarily understand, and then we pulled a lot of people with us. We created a vision of Philadelphia that had all of us in it, um, from our seniors and our elders to our business members to our youth, and believe it or not, we became more powerful than this city has ever seen. I'm in my seat on city council because of the people in this room. I owe my political vision, my history, and my passion to the people in this room. And I will absolutely shut down anybody who tries to take on um, immigrant anti-xenophobic uh, hate. Um, we did it together at the airport. We did it together by establishing Philadelphia as a sanctuary city. We took on policing. We took on politics. And now we're held to, now we are here to claim our place as a as people of power. All right. Let's, uh, let's appreciate Helen Gim, who is our Democratic candidate for mayor of the city of Philadelphia. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, everybody. All right, our next and final candidate is Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown, come on up. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hello, I'm good. All right, have a seat. Um, just to reiterate our rules of the game, uh, one minute to introduce yourself, then one minute to answer each of the three questions, and then we'll have questions from the audience. Great. So we begin by uh, introducing yourself. Thank you. I'm Jeff Brown. Um, you may know me from my grocery business, ShopRite. Um, and I've used the grocery business as a tool to help people. I put grocery stores where others didn't want to go and food deserts that were costing people um, a 20 year less life expectancy. I used it to hire people that don't get opportunities elsewhere, um, especially local people, handicapped people, pe immigrants, um, even if they didn't speak English, we taught them English, and returning citizens, people that have gone to court, uh, that have gone, you know, their criminally justice involved to help them turn their lives around. And, uh, and I've helped small businesses. Um, we have 400 small businesses we help incubate because it's the American dream. The American dream is to come here, my family were immigrants, to come here and make a new life for our families and create wealth and education and help things progress. That's the dream that, that I want for everybody. All right. First question. In your past public and private life, what have you done to support immigrants and make Philly an immigrant-friendly city? So if you know anything about my business, before we open a store, we meet with the community. We have a town hall meeting, we listen to everyone. I'm very interested in the anthropology of people's lives, where they come from, their religion, their, what they celebrate, how they think about the world, and I build stores for them. Like for example, I see my good friend in the audience from the Western African community, and in the store in his neighborhood, we put Western African cuisine, we hired Western Africans. Even on my campaign at Western Africans. And we have done that in every store. Learn about culture, celebrate culture, build something that helps people, including creating opportunities for them and doing business with them. So my work to help people is very, very extensive. I hired 60,000 people from the neighborhoods in my career, and I've done the same thing as chairman of the workforce system, as chairman when I was of Philadelphia Youth Network, getting summer internships opportunities. My whole life has been about using every form mm. to help people. How would you ensure the safety and well-being of immigrants and other marginalized youth, both in and out of school? Well, I think 
that we we need to restore our police fund. It's it's a very understaffed to that. But while we're restoring it, let's diversify it and let it match the demographics of our city. Young people, my wife told me, young people, they need to be busy. In, in a city like this, the city needs to help out. It has to fund the rec centers and their activities. It has to have lifeguards in the pools. It, it needs to have librarians, including weekend hours. We need to fully fund Philadelphia Youth Network so young people can get their first summer internship and learn how to work. That's very important, and in school, if they're struggling, let's intervene before they're in a criminal justice situation to help them. How would your administration address health care, education, and other essential services for immigrant residents, regardless of status, whether documented or not? So, in my point of view, Philadelphia is a melting pot. And what's special about Philadelphia is the people that live here have, have migrated here from all over the world. That's what's special. And it results in the specialness of our restaurants, our cultural attractions, and I think a lot of us are here to celebrate our differences. And when people come, they come with nothing. My grandfather came with 25 cents in his pocket. And you can't, you can't let them suffer or die on the street or not get health care. We need to make sure that, for example, in our clinics, the city-owned clinics, we need to be open to everyone that lives here. FQHCs are another example. Sometimes you get paid and sometimes you need to help out because everyone deserves health care. All right, now we're going to take some questions from the audience. So who has our first question? Hi. Uh, the question is, how would you ensure that immigrants and the smaller BIPOC populations are equitably represented in the city government and in decision making? So, so in my point of view, and if you've ever been to my stores, you'll see this. Um, we have one of the most diverse businesses in the, in the city, even more diverse than the government. And the government is supposed to set an example for us. Even my management is more, more than 50% diverse. I would do the same thing in our government. I look at the demographics of the city, and my goal would be to have the employees and the leadership of the city match the demographics. And I will work especially hard to give opportunities to people that normally never get the opportunity. My name is Dovey Javadev from the African uh, Cultural Alliance, Southwest Philadelphia. How can you, how can city government be easily accessible and streamlined for small businesses and immigrants? Businesses who have a hard time navigating the system. Yeah, so it, from a context of competition with other cities, we have an incredibly complex city. Um, but big cities like New York, you figure would be complex, are very easy to open a business. I want to have a, a cabinet level position for process improvement and technology. Especially for the immigrant community, I would like them to be able to do every service online where they can convert to the language, their native tongue, so they can easily navigate what they want. And I also want to simplify it, so instead of 150 steps, it's narrowed down to five or six steps. Um, I have done this kind of simplification in my business, and I think I have a very clear view of what we need to do it here, and I think it will help us grow, increase tax revenue, and have more resources to help people. If we can free up business and, and make this the, the city it should be, a beacon for entrepreneurship. Uh, this is a very tough question. Uh, same way you made about the current mayor, but he was really good on this issue. As mayor, how will you protect immigrant communities here in Philadelphia from the very dangerous rhetoric from some national politicians who promote hatred and incite violence against immigrants? Specifically. Yeah, it's not a tough question. Um, it's happening. Uh, national politicians should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, what? what they do. And I kind of feel like a lot of people in this room, including me, are on the list. You know, because where I come from, because of my religion, I feel I'm on the list. Philadelphia is a melting pot. We need to be a safe place for everyone. We need to stand up against those national politicians, including sue them, 
when we have to sue them to defend our rights. No moving backwards on human rights of any kind. We fight tooth and nail to protect our human rights. This should be a bastion for free people of all kinds to be here. I will fight for you. All right, do we have any more questions? One more? Okay. Okay. Andy Toy. Um, um, Philadelphia has only gained back population in the last number of years and due in large part due to immigrants. Uh, how would you make sure the numbers continue to grow to stem the population loss we've seen in the last two years? So I think our population loss it is greatly um, uh, due to violence. Um, I think a lot of Philadelphians are very concerned about the level of violence. I think, I think we really need to restore the police, but this time more diverse and train to de-escalate problems, have a service mentality. I think we use, need to use cameras like gunshot cameras and forensics because we have 1,700 violent individuals in our city that belong off our streets at this time. And you know, I hire returning citizens and we'll help them turn their lives uh, around, but we can't let them kill us. And that's what we're allowing today. I think if this city is safe, you will see people pour into it because it's a great city. Well, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us, Jeff Brown. Let's uh, show our appreciation for Jeff Brown. Thank you. Running for the 100th mayor of the city of Philadelphia. Thank you for having me. Thank you a for joining us. There's a lot of friends here, so hi all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, and I think that... Oh, okay. All right. Um, the representative for Alan John, would you please join us up front? There you are. How are you? Uh, good. All right. Uh, well, Alan Don was not able to be here, we understand. But we're going to give you a one minute to talk about Alan Don and perhaps why people should vote for him. So tell us who you are, first of all. My name is Dorian Evans. All right. I, uh, I'm a local business person, born and raised in Philadelphia. Um, mother from South Philly, father from North Philly. I was raised in South Philly. and. Uh, in uh, southwest Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And why would folks want to uh, elect Alan Dunn? I think Alan's superpower is the fact that he doesn't have the big endorsements. You know, when you don't have the big endorsements, you don't have to do the favors for those big endorsees that are going to keep things just as they are. And we want change. If you really want real change, you have to do it without the big endorsements coming behind you that are going to tell you what to do. I can't see a city that's going to be just fully controlled by the building trades. You know what that's going to do for a small contractor? When you look at the city and you turn around and you look at other things, like uh, a police endorsement, All right. how do you then go and tell them, I'm going to change the police? Unfortunately, your time is up, <laughs> but we thank you for representing uh, former city councilman Alan Don. What we're going to do it, we're going to do it right, and it's going to be honest and open. Right. That's what we want. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, let me turn the microphone over to you. All candidates are here. All candidates. We have, okay. We like, uh, All right. Well, let's do this. We're going to uh, take the remaining time that we have and allow each candidate to uh, speak for one minute to uh, make their case uh, for why we should vote for them. So, who wants to come up? Come on down, tell us who you are. Any candidates still here? You have a minute to come join us. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Seth Bluestein. I am one of the three city commissioners responsible for voter registration and elections in Philadelphia. It's our job to make sure that your voices are able to be heard. One of the accomplishments I'm very proud about uh, having achieved in the last year is expanding the language access available for voters in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, we had three languages for voters, English, Spanish, and Chinese, and we now have nine languages available for voter education and materials. So we've tripled the number of resources available for Philadelphia voters. We have a table in the back where we have educational materials in all nine of those languages, as well as demonstrations for the electronic poll books and other information about voting in Philadelphia. So I really hope that you'll consider me in November uh, to be re-elected as city commissioner. If you have any, ele uh, any election questions or anything we can help you with, uh, we're happy to do so. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Who else would like to come join us? 
any uh, remaining candidates here today, you're welcome to come up for city council. Well, you all came and you all left, so that's all right. But we thank you for coming because this was amazing. The fact that so many of you showed up for this candidates forum uh, on this very, very important issue. Andy Toy, why don't you close things out for us? Thank you all for coming, and um, we're going to have a picture of time. If anybody wants to take their picture in front of the community college banner um, to show you were here. Uh, community college, thank you. Thank you, Gil. Thank you, Lorraine. Great job. And thank you, United Voices, our coalition partners. Thanks to Joy for keeping time Joy for so trying to keep everybody on schedule. Um, if the United Voices folks that are still here can come up, we'll take a picture of ourselves too. And also we have to move a few tables around, so there is work involved in this too, if you uh, are part of the partnership. All right, and a special Thanks. shout out to our sound crew. They did an amazing job under and difficult circumstances, so let's give them a little round of applause there. Thank you so much. Oh, and thanks to all of our amazing interpreters for helping us today. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to come up and take a picture, especially the organizers. Come on down. Come on down. Oh. You want to? Let me get my friend. Okay. <laughs>